Hi everyone, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Data Plus AI Summit and look who are with me, Holly and Nick. Welcome to the Robert Show. Super excited to be with both of you here. Holly, great job at the keynote. Great Thank announcements you. that you all have been, uh, you, all, you all have made at the keynote. Uh, and I'm excited to chat with both of you and get a little more in depth about the announcements, but uh, in general about data for intelligence, uh, right? Uh, and I'm kind of uh, curious to know what does that mean for people? Yeah, sure. So the theme this year is data intelligence for all. For all, yeah. Uh, and so I think this means different things to different people. But for me, I think it means not just about making agents, uh, but it's also about how this kind of integrates with all aspects of the data work that you're doing. Right. So for example, you know, we've got a Databricks assistant. I think lots of people have an assistant right now. But that is absolutely fantastic. And it's got things that is like data aware. So it's contextually aware of what's happening with your data. But then we also have GD spaces as well, where people can interact with the data in plain English. But then I think the thing that takes it to the next level for me is there's a bunch of AI that goes on behind the scenes that customers might not know about that goes into really honing that performance. Um, I think we have some stats tomorrow, but I will say the trend is good. Uh, yep. Generally, if you're running similar queries over time, the amount of time it takes to run has dropped dramatically over the last three years. So when I think about data intelligence for all, that's what I think about it, but Nick? Uh, you really did cover it all, so. <laughs> I don't have much to add to that. Okay, that's yeah, there good. we go. Comprehensive answer. You stole the show already. Uh, mm -hmm. th that's awesome. I, I love how Holly, and you, and Nick kind of have like a good rapport in terms of you know going out and uh, talking about things, which kind of makes sense to the audience as well. Uh, I'm now curious to learn a little about uh, what was your favorite announcement. Uh, I mean, I'm biased, so I'm <laughs> obviously going to say Lake Base. I think for me, if so I stole your answer again. Well, you presented it. I watched it. So. Uh, it was my favorite announcement, absolutely. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, so maybe if you're not familiar with what Lake Base is, what it is. Did yeah. watch the keynote. So uh, Databricks has always been in the analytics space, and so right. the data that has been designed is being designed to be queried by lots of people to do very complex ETL. And that's great for analytics, but it's not great at using it as like a back-end data store. So if you've got an application and you need to have those super quick millisecond read and writes uh, for your application, because you don't want to wait a few seconds for your, for your analytics uh, to run, um, with Lakebase, it is something, a new capability that you're now able to have native within the Databricks platform, nice. which is fantastic. We've also got Databricks apps now as well, so you'll have a much slicker experience with that. But we are able to bridge the gap between having data that is in um, in Lakebase, in Postgres, and being able to sync it in and out of your mm. uh, database as well. So having this idea of like a single source of truth, that used to be nigh impossible. That used to be a horrible thing to do. And now with Lakebase, that is something that is, you know, it's a few button clicks to, to get set up, which is fantastic. But I think for me, that's the big thing about Postgres. If I asked you about it, I think your answer would probably be branching. Branching? And really, it's the beginning of our journey to doing yep. everything. Yep. Um, I really think that that's what Databricks' future is all about. So now we have apps. Now we have online transaction databases. Yep. Um, we can do basically everything. So I'm really excited for that. Cool. That's fantastic. Uh, another interesting and kind of curious question for you all is, why is the database layer so critical to building production-ready AI and agents, and why are traditional databases a friction point for AI? What do you kind of think about that? Ooh, spicy <laughs> question. So, um, so this kind of builds on the statement of the integration with apps. So if you've got something that is uh, an agent that you've created, and you've got humans that are interacting with it, and they need, you know, those agents need to understand the data that's in your, uh, your data estate in your lake house, um, you need to be able to get access to that very, very quickly, and mm. that's where this kind of online stuff comes in if you have an agent that needs to kind of quickly go through lots of things. So that's where that kind of starts to come into to that piece. Um, I think also something that's wonderful about Neon, which is um, the company that we are, we've are we acquired. acquired. Uh, right. Really, really excited to have them join the company. Uh, one of the fantastic things is that they've got separate, separated uh, compute from the storage. And so this is like really on brand for Databricks. Like we have been from the beginning super keen on having those two things separated so that it's your data and your storage um, in the lake house and then the compute is something that you pay for. And with, um, with the lake base that we've got at the moment, they are right. still very separate. So you don't have to have it up and running all the time, um, and you've got some options for that as well. Yeah, what, do you, what would you like to add, Nick? Um, really that, I mean, traditionally, we yeah. have, in the analytics space, it's a, I'd say it's slow-moving data. Yeah. And now with Lakebase, we have 
fast moving data, so OLTP versus OLAP, and that there really long term shouldn't be a distinction between those two things. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I hope we're getting to, and like I said, that's the journey that just began. That's fantastic. Uh, one more quick question I have is around the platform. How does Databricks use AI to make data engineers more effective? Any thoughts around that? Very oh. generic, broad question, yeah. but I'm kind of you know curious to see what you all have in mind. Yes, yeah, so one of the great things about working at Databricks is if we see any kind of inefficiency in the way that we're working, just like yell at the engineering team and be like, <laughs> we should make this feature, this thing would be amazing. Right, exactly. Uh, and so things like, we do have our Databricks assistant, uh, we make a lot of demos for a living, it's normally features that we've never seen before, yep. and so having something that helps us put together like a structure, or like, you know that syntax that you can't, like regex, oh my goodness, you know, you've done it before, you can't quite remember it, you don't really want to like go digging into Stack Overflow, right. why not use the assistant? Um, it's also great for teaching you new things as well, it'll link to the documents that you need if you want to go read about something fully. Um, so yeah, that makes, you know, just from an individual perspective, it makes data engineers more effective. But one of the other things I want to talk about is the ability for practice, um, not necessarily data practitioners, but like data consumers. Uh, we have an AIBI offering, which gives you dashboarding kind of techniques yeah. that you you would kind of come to expect. Uh, but it also has this magic Ask Genie button at the Genie, top left-hand right. side. And so if you've made a dashboard, and you know how it goes when you make a dashboard. Exactly. You make it, and everyone agrees <laughs> on the spec, and then you deliver the dashboard, and someone goes, oh, well, actually, I think I would like to ask a question. But it's like, I can't add that extra thing in just for you, buddy. Um, but right. with Genie, you know, you can just mash the button, and then you can say, you know, you can ask questions of that data set in plain English, and so that saves a lot of time for people as well. So yeah. I think for me, that's that. Uh, I think in terms of performance stuff, though, you might have some other opinions. Yeah, Nick. Well, honestly, she spoke about so much that I forgot the question. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's what it. Say it again. <laughs> it's more about uh, what Databricks does for data engineers. What Databricks does broad, for data engineers? Yeah. Okay, because you went into AI, so I was like, what? Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, that's what. Sorry, I, I didn't no. realize there was a non-AI option to this. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, well, for me, for really. May I hold this? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it's really that it's all in one place. So I'm coming coming from a world where you have to stitch together a bunch of different services, which is kind of the original pitch, really. Centralized, unified, uh, on one platform, being able to do end-to-end -end work. Yep. So, for example, today in the AI space, we can do something on Playground, we can prototype there, we can take it to MLflow, do experiments, we can evaluate the, how well the agents are doing, we can yep. deploy them on model serving, all of that happens in one place, yep. one pane, and uh, it's yep. really it's really effective. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, also, just taking a step back and you know getting back to Lake Base. Uh, kind of curious from a data engineering's perspective, mm -hmm. how do you see it? It's going to help them. How do I see that it's going to help them? So similar to what Nick said, this is going to dramatically simplify uh, the kind of data estate that mm -hmm. you've got at the moment. So whenever yep. you're, I know some people love to stitch together kind of like lots of different tools, but it's never that simple. Like there's always integrations that don't necessarily work. You want APIs, they don't necessarily exist. Um, there's always never like 100% perfect compatibility right. when it comes to you know using, using tools together. Now if you're working in the open source space, that's great because some people choose to say, well, that thing doesn't exist and I'm going to build it now. <laughs> Um, that's not necessarily representative, and I would like to consider myself not a terrible data engineer, but like yep. the idea of building my own integrations from scratch like every time would give me a headache. So having something that is simplified, that you know, it does do all your access management type things for you. You do, you know, you've got that kind of security and governance there. Right. And you don't like that's the that's the hard boring stuff, really, isn't it? Like stitching together the tech is fun, but then yeah. someone from you know audit or whatever comes along and says, oh, but like what are you doing about this particular threat vector? And it's like you don't know the answer because you. you put it together yourself, but having a, like a unified platform really takes a lot of the worry away from it and you can focus on getting like Love it. data capabilities done, not on the sticking it all together. Yeah, one advice for uh, the data engineers out there, the data analysts who are uh, looking forward to using data lay, database, uh -huh. uh, what would that be? Ooh, uh, so, Slight tangent, we announced something called um, Databricks Free, Databricks Community. Wait, what was it called? Free. Free, free edition, thank free you. Free edition. I definitely yes, paid attention. Exactly. Um, so if you uh, you know you don't want to turn something on in your you know production account at the moment just to see what it looks like, you could do it in the free version. Or even if you're not using Databricks at the moment, again we've got this super slick free version that you can sign up for now. Just mm. have a play around with it. Like if you break something, like it's fine. Like you're not going to pay a load of money for it. You can just delete it and start again. Oh wow! So Love it. yeah, Easy. 
Yeah, easy. <laughs> so my recommendation would be to give it a go. I think you'd be surprised just how easy it is to set up. Like there was a lot of prep that went into the demo today, but it wasn't that hard. Like it was a bunch <laughs> of clicking buttons. Like building yeah. the app was harder, and yeah. then building the simulation was even harder. Like the easy bit was clicking the buttons to get the uh, to get Lake Bay set up. So give it a go. It's not terribly difficult. Just kind of have it in your mind about what it does and doesn't do. And then when it comes up as an opportunity for a project to solve a particular problem you have, you've got it in the back of your mind of like, yes, this is this does the thing that I need it to do. And yes, I can pitch it to the to the team to, yeah. to use it. Fantastic. I love the free edition as well. It kind of gives more flexibility to the users out there to go and try and do make that mistake and then just go back and do it again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nick, uh, what do learn, you think? Or to learn it in the first place. That's yeah, the whole idea. to learn. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. So that's your first advice. Go and check the free edition and learn first. Well, if you don't already have Databricks, yeah. Absolutely. Go do that. Yeah. Awesome. This is great. Holly, Nick, uh, always such a pleasure Thank seeing you, you both, uh, learning uh, everything that you all speak online as well, and following you all. Uh, we'll keep the conversation going, but have a fantastic Data Plus AI Summit and great announcement. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you everyone for joining us today.